Hello everybody and welcome back. Good to talk to all of you again today and I am free for I think another couple of weeks. <laughs> and then it's back to school and back to the grind. <laughs> At least I get a break. At least I get a bit of a break. It's a much needed break. Anyways, um, so let's uh, move on to today's topic which is mostly going to be talking about battle cruisers. So with the arrival of Constellation and now the announced future uh, German battle cruisers, these ships are going to make an appearance in the game. Now, of course, if we're talking about the German battle cruisers specifically, we're dealing with mostly sort of the early 20th century type designs, really until like I think the end of the 1910s. And well, how do we put this? Um, they're kind of dated designs by Tier 10. Mostly because by the time we get to Tier 10 in World of Warships, we're dealing with very sort of late Second World War era designs. And a lot of those ships, and maybe even past Second World War, and a lot of those ships are obviously designed with the sort of fast battleship uh, design concept, which is really the fusion of the traditional well-armored battleships along with the fast but not so well armored uh, battle cruisers. So now we have a whole line of battle cruisers and of course their not so good armor actually appears in game in the form of reduced bow and stern plating. In the form of the German uh, battle cruisers, we're talking 27 millimeters at tier 10. Uh, the British Tier 10, the Incomparable, what a name by the way, Incomparable, <laughs> has only 25 millimeters of plating. But they are fast. However, are they really all that much faster than a lot of the current fast battleships of Tier 10? Well, yeah, but only by a couple of knots. Now, one could make an argument that Wargaming is planning that these new battle cruisers will have some sort of, I guess, synergy with that skill that they're moving to tier in the second row of skills, uh, the swift skill, which gives you 10% speed boost when you're undetected. It is a skill that I'm actually using on the constellation gameplay in the background here. And I tried it out and sort of mostly as a sort of a simulation as to what the future brings. And I think it is a interesting skill for battle cruisers. I mean, it does allow constellation to go 38 point, I think it's like five knots or something like that. It's a pretty fast ship in a straight line if I'm not doing much with it. Um, and of course that speed does allow for some interesting plays because you can actually appear in places where people don't expect you. Uh, in one particular game, uh, the enemy team went a little bit heavier to the south. They didn't have a lot of things that were going north, uh, a couple of slow battleships, and then they were sending a relatively fast French cruiser up. But I was faster than that French cruiser because I don't think that guy was using a speed boost. And basically, by the time he got to position, I was already there, and he couldn't outrun me. <laughs> so, dead French cruiser. And of course, that flank ended up collapsing very, very quickly. So the speed does give you that ability to make plays. However... There is something to be said about what these ships are being classified as in-game. Which, in the case of Constellation, the Schlieffen, the Incomparable, they're being classified as full-fledged battleships. And that is... Well, let's just say that's not great. Um, let's do a little bit of a comparison, shall we say, right? Let's do a bit of a comparison. Think about the current battle cruisers you know, quote unquote, that we have in the game, right? We've got Hood, which is being treated as a full-fledged battleship, but, she, you know, sort of her armor is comparable to all the other battleships that are tier. Okay, so she's basically being treated as a full-fledged battleship, not a battle cruiser. Okay. But we look at the actual battle cruisers, you know, think Stalingrad, Kronstadt, Alaska. What are they being classified as? Well, cruisers. And in the cruiser category, they are really, really good ships, and they're very strong ships, in that regard because, well, they're basically being put in a category of a ship that they were meant to kill. So in the cruise category, they're really, really strong. But imagine if those kind of ships were now put into a battleship category with their sort of similar type of, um, you know, armor and everything. And you're going to go, well, that's a little on the weak side. And that's precisely kind of the problem that these ships are run into constellation and you know these new german battle cruisers um and uh, and of course incomparable not forgetting incomparable she's obviously incomparable to anything else but they're basically being asked to do 
a battleship's job, but they're really, really sort of battle cruisers in every sense of the word. Yes, they've got battleship guns, but their armor is not battleship level. And I've noticed this when I'm playing Constellation 2. It's like, even though I want to play the battle cruiser role, I go into a game and, oh, look, I am one of two battleships on this flank, and I now have to play a battleship role. I can't really just go and fully utilize that speed in a lot of very creative kind of ways. Hold on, the team needs me to be a battleship first. So you inadvertently end up with a battle cruiser problem. Where do these ships really belong? And really, after all this time, and I've been sort of saying this as far back as I can remember, I think battle cruisers really need their own battle cruiser sort of category. Just because if you put them in the cruiser category, they're really, really strong. You put them in the battleship category, and they kind of don't fit. I mean, you look at the German battle cruisers, by the way, um, and they are able to go fast while undetected, assuming that that swift skill takes effect, right? I think the uh, Schlieffen, which is 34.1 knots base, uh, if you calculate it in speed flag, the swift skill, whatever, that ship without a speed boost can go 39 knots, you know, nexus of 39 knots, which is a very, very fast ship. But then you look at sort of her... Uh, qualities, you know, and she's all about being sort of stealthy, having good secondaries, and in that case, she's supposed to kind of get up close, but 27 millimeter plating. How does that brawling thing kind of work in that case, right? To put things into perspective, by the way, if you take a Palmer, which is, you know, uh, full-blown German battleship with full-fledged armor and everything. Um, and yes, Palmer doesn't get as fast as the Schlieffen will. But if you actually look at the speed difference, Palmer is about maybe mm, three and a half knots slower if you factor in the swift skill and the speed flag. So Palmer will make almost 36 knots. So that's not a huge difference there. And, you know, that sort of exchange of having much weaker armor that can be overmatched by a lot of the things that you're going to run into at tier 10 versus a battleship that, you know, you don't have to worry about that. I don't know. I'm not sold on that idea. So it doesn't make all that much sense. And I think Wargaming really has to begin to think about this. Because by the way, in the event that you actually had an entirely separate battle cruiser, um, you know, sort of uh, tree, right, and it's a, its own classification, then you can also create sort of captain skills or whatever that are dedicated to that particular uh, class. And you can also take away some of the problem ships that have existed in, um, you know, everything from competitive to whatever, you know, the, the ships that are currently classified as cruisers. You can move them into a battle cruiser category. And that might allow cruisers really to sort of make a comeback of their own, right? Because in a lot of ways, when you're at the higher tiers, you know, playing a battle cruiser, super cruiser, for example, you know, you have advantages over just traditional cruisers in some ways. So maybe that'll be a way to help sort of make that a little bit of a better situation as well. And also when you're talking about in the actual game itself, when you're playing, you know, you, you would have... I guess, slightly different kinds of uh, team uh, sort of compositions. And maybe that will be interesting in its own way, right? Instead of having just a ton of battleships, there's now some battleships, some battle cruisers, some cruisers, some destroyers, and then, of course, in the future, some submarines. Oh, yeah, and some ca carriers thrown in there as well. I mean, I wouldn't mind that. Um, although 12 versus 12, maybe that won't be enough to have that kind of uh, diversity. But who knows? Maybe you could open up the gameplay as well, right? Imagine if you don't have as many battleships every game. Well, then maybe certain uh, battle lines are much more fluid, right? Maybe there's a lot more battle cruiser action, which is a lot more mobile gameplay. Could add some interesting, I guess, dimensions, differences to the game uh, that is 
kind of lacking maybe and also kind of stale right i mean maybe that was the whole intention of wargaming starting to really think about uh, battle cruisers starting to think about things like the hybrids starting to think about uh submarines maybe they're trying to evolve the game um to add some more flavor to it but in the same way if they're trying to really do that you know miss classifying ships into the wrong sort of classes well that's not really helping right that's not really helping because you're just ending up with ships that are being forced to do roles that they're maybe not all that suited for and they also in its own way create a some form of imbalance as well in the game um i notably will say that if i'm like a constellation and the enemy team doesn't have a constellation then i'm a bit of a detriment at times to my team it feels like you know because i can't fully do that battleship role that my team demands from me anyways what do you guys think you know um do you think that this uh question this battle cruiser question you know can be solved by creating their own uh, class or do you have any other ideas you know let me know in the comment section below. Aside from all that, folks, take care, have yourselves a good one, and I'll catch all of you again soon.